Okay, hi everyone. Um, welcome to the, the workshop session of the Research Data Management Day. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to show um, a mirror figure and try to emphasize um, how we can use the various pieces of, of, of data we have in the mirror to um, help build a figure. Um, so I'm going to start with a quick um, a few words of uh, introduction to ONME and the Mero for those who are uh, new to Mero. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the data I'm going to use in the workshop, and, and then I'll go through the, uh, the workshop itself. Um, so we'll, we'll have um, usernames and passwords due to their login to the, um, the server that we're using. Um, and, and, and then after, after a short break in the next session, um, we've got a couple of different uh, uh, breakout rooms um, as uh, Josh outlined. Um, so for those who are kind of new to figure who want to go over some of the stuff that we've covered in the workshop in a bit more detail, um, there's uh, the kind of the figure UI workshop. Um, and and then and I'll be doing a, a bit more kind of advanced stuff um, how to create and edit um, figures using um, some scripting, Python, JavaScript. Um, so very briefly, um, OME, we're all about interoperability um, of the data. We want to be able to exchange um, data and metadata and, and analysis results between different applications, um, keeping them linked together in, in some way. One of the tools um, that we develop is a Mero, and that's a server that stores all your original image data um, with a relational database that contains some of the metadata from, from those images, as well as user added annotations. Um, and you can store an analysis results um, in sort of user created tables. Um, all of that is available through the internet connections with different clients at different stages of your, of your workflow. Um, so everything we're going to be doing in uh, in this workshop is, is using a web-based client. So this is what the, the, the generic um, web client looks like where we're browsing a data, selecting images, and, and the associated metadata and analysis reports is available in the right-hand panel. The um, Amero API is available in a number of different languages. Um, so for the scripting um, part of this workflow, we're going to be using Python um, to read data from the server um, and also um, JavaScript which can um, access data um, in a JSON format from an error. Um, as you know, the only team runs the image data resource and this has been a um, very useful part of, of data for um, all the workshops that we're doing. Um, and in, in this workshop, um, I'm using data from um, IDR79, so that's Jonas uh, Hartman. So um, we actually invited um, Jonas to, to present his um, flash talk um, for this session um, based on his interesting workflows for IDR79 and the data management uh, challenges that, that um, he's seen in that workflows. Um, and it's kind of a, a coincidence that I also um, picked images from IDR79 just when browsing um, through IDR, looking for some nice images um, for this workshop. Um, so these are images of the um, primordium lateral, um, lateral line primordium from zebrafish embryo. So this data, this image in the center here is actually being loaded um, from IDR. Um, and this the larger slide here shows the location of that within the zebrafish embryo. Um, so Got nice images, but also um, some nice analysis results um, that go along with those images, and we can use those. Um, so, using data from a number of different sources uh, to incorporate into a figure, obviously pixel sizes um, you can use for scale bars, timestamps we weren't using in, in this case, but you can create labels from timestamp data as well, um, channel names. Um, User, user added annotations uh, in the form of tags or key value pairs, or even the, the names of the images, 
also regions of interest on the images um, I showed in this figure. Um, and then um, the analysis results we can use partly to identify the images we want to incorporate into a figure, um, but also in the scripting part of the workflow, um, we'll be using analysis results and adding those into a figure as well. So the advantages of, of using these um, pieces of data from, from a Mero to create figure is partly um, it's, it makes the, the step much quicker, um, but also avoids um, errors um, in, in the manual steps of creating a figure. So just an overview of the scripting, what we'll be doing in the scripting part of the workshop. Um, so Mero stores um, files, uh, figures on the server in the form of a, a, a JSON file. And so we can create those um, on Amero using the Amero API, in this case, um, Python scripts running on the server. So they're reading data from Amero and then um, creating the JSON and, and then creating that file through the API. Um, and then we can call those server-side scripts from um, any client um, of Amero. So that allows all of the users of, of a Mero system to be able to, to, to run these um, same scripts and provides functionality to all the users. Um, another approach we can take is having loaded the figure into the, into the browser and you're looking at the, the, the figure. Um, we, ha we have them, uh, the file represented as this, this figure model in JavaScript. Um, and so we can use the JavaScript in the, in the browser um, to manipulate this um, model um, in a quite interactive um, way. Um, and this is a, a screenshot from that second approach. Um, so it's showing the, the browser console here. And this is a sort of JavaScript um, pasted into the console and running on, on a selected image. And what this is doing is actually loading data from a Mero, um, loading values for each of the shapes um, within the selected panel here. And then using the values that it retrieves to set the color uh, on all these um, shapes. So we're seeing most round um, cells in red and the, the longer cells in green. Um, so all of that and, and the other um, stuff I'm going to be presenting here is available through these um, Mero guides. Um, and you can find those at these links or, or simply by searching for Mero guides. Um, and a lot of these videos are also available on YouTube. Finally, just thank you to our, our funders. Um, and I'm going to switch over to the workshop server. So you all have um, ability to uh, view this community portal um, document. And actually, I can put this um, the link um, from here into the, the chat, or maybe someone can do that. Let's see. Um, and so we'll have that. Okay. So if you go to that, um, follow that link, um, then there'll be some details on how to connect to um, the server we're going to use for the workshop. So, yep, let's go here. Okay. So, I'm going to hopefully this is loading faster for, for you. Okay, so what we've um, created here is basically a, these are all the usernames available on this server. The server address itself is workshop.openmicroscopy.org. Um, what I suggest, suggest you do if you can edit this um, is to just put your name here and claim one of these usernames um, and then log on to the, the workshop server with, a, with that username and the password only2021.
Alternatively, I could assign usernames as we just go through the, the list of attendees here and sign usernames. I, I think it's 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 getting getting on on nicely. It's just you need to leave people time and they will catch up. And okay. the, the, the okay. I mean, that it, it actually doesn't, it's not going to break anything if people log in with the same username, actually. Um, but it's nice to, to have some different users here. It is also not necessary that you really spell out your true name next to the user. It's just yeah. necessary to say this is occupied already. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, so the data, um, that we have for, for this workshop is owned by um, this user called trainer one. Um, so what you'll want to do to be able to see this data is to go to the this um, chooser here between groups and users and go into lab lab one, which is the group that um, containing this data um, and then scroll down to trainer one. Actually, I'm going to provide an alternative uh, way of doing that. Let me, um, okay, so it's going to load that data for me. Um, I can provide a shortcut which might find easier. So if I click on the, the project, and I'm going to copy a link to that project and put that in the chat. So once you've um, logged on, or in fact, even if you click on that and you're not logged on, um, it'll ask for your username and password, and then you'll be redirected to show the same data without having to do the group switching steps that I just did. Okay. So let's assume that everyone's found um, some of this data. And so I'm just going to show, talk through some of the data um, that we have available um, for these images that we can use in the figure. So as I said, these have a pixel size set. We have channel names. Um, these are uh, editable or they can come from the metadata. Um, and then we have various um, key value pairs. Some of these are have been loaded directly from um, IDR. Um, some we sort of process those um, that, that data to provide more user-friendly uh, key value pairs that we can um, use in a figure. So it's split out some of the, the information for each of the channels. Um, we also have um, a number of ROIs on each image. Um, and if I open this in the full viewer, you can see what they those look like. So these are um, segmentations of the, or the cells within um, this image. And Let's load the RYs here. And so we have a, a polygon for on each uh, Z section within, within the Z stack and multiple polygons um, under each RY, which represents a cell. Um, it's just loading that data. Okay. So so these are all um, ROIs coming from um, from IDR, and if I select a, a particular one, we can see that it's it's part of a stack of of, of shapes on different set sections. Okay. So, um, and then the as I mentioned, there's some um, additional analysis results. 
um, for these images. And we can visualize that um, in the Parade uh, plugin. So I'm going to switch to the Parade. And so I'm going to, I'm going to collapse collapse this data set. What that allows me to do is, is to open them all. I can see all the data sets um, under this project, allowing me to, to filter all these images at once. Um, and so I have ROI data um, for the for a lot of these images within this uh, project. Okay, so I'm just going to um, show the table table view here. I went. I'm going to skip on the filtering um, functionality just now, um, and I'm just going to plot. Um, so a tissue frame of um, so the raw the raw y um, range and load those data for the raw y range and then the tissue frame of reference um, in the y range. So these are these are summaries of the coordinates of the cells um, in the original um, images against the coordinates having corrected for the, the tissue orientation. Um, so plotting those one against the other um, allows me to, so there's a, obviously a correlation, but the, the values that lie away from this correlation that have a higher um, range of, of values in the raw tissue um, are the ones um, at which the images lie off of the horizontal uh, axis. So I can look at in the preview tab, you can see that these, these ones are not orientated um, horizontally so well. Okay, so I can, I can use this as a way of selecting particular images um, to create a figure. Um, what I actually want to do here is, is choose one image from each of a bunch of these different um, data sets to show the different staining, uh, different targets. So I'm actually, I'm gonna filter um, by a rating, because I've previously gone through um, a bunch of these um, images and rated um, as five star, particular ones that, that I want to include, include in the figure. Okay, so this is, Chosen these these ones um, amongst all of the images available. And in the general tab here, it's showing that I've selected these these four objects. And then I can open these in a in a bunch of different um, applications. So the idea that you've just seen, but I'm, what I'm going to do here is open these in bigger. Okay, so this has opened a, a, a new page. This is the figure, figure app. And I can now start working with these images um, to lay them out as I want to in a figure. So very simply, I can just drag these panels around. Um, I can resize them. You'll notice when I, when I squash them, it's not squash, squashing the pixel data within the image. It's just um, sketching. So it's effectively just cropping um, the image to exclude parts of it. Um, and if I want to do this to multiple um, panels at once and keep the same um, size of the panels, I can select a bunch of panels just by dragging across the screen um, to include the images I want to select. And I'm going to go up to the top the top right hand side here and I can align the sizes in a bunch of ways. So what I want to do here is to make them all exactly the same size. So I'm going to choose the line by width and height. Okay, so this is giving me panels all the same size. And then 
to tidy up the alignment of them, I can I can click on this align to grid um, button here with it, with all of these selected. So in both of those cases, um, the alignment and and the fixing of the size, it's the top the topmost top left um, panel that's used as a as a reference, and and the others will be um, resized according to that to match that one. Okay, so I can shrink them all a little bit. Again, they all keep their aspect ratio um, if I resize by a corner. And I'm going to zoom down at the bottom, bottom left. I'm going to zoom the whole um, figure in to show that a bit closer. Okay, so in continuing the, the, to lay out the, the panels I want for this figure, I'm going to just use the keyboard shortcuts to copy um, all these panels. I can also use um, the edit copy command up there when I have a panel selected. Um, so I'm going to copy and then again using the keyboard shortcuts just to paste to duplicate these panels. And it'll just, for, if I copy a column and paste it, it'll propagate across the page. If I copy a row and paste, it'll um, propagate down the page. Okay, so I've got some the, the kind of layout I want here. Um, and now I can start manipulating um, the panels a little bit. So, so these images, in, in they're not exported um, from a mirror at this stage. We're very much within a mirror. We still have access to all the um, other um, all, the, all the parts of the image that are in a mirror. So here I can scroll to a different Z section. I've got all the Z sections available. The same would be true if this is the time course, so it's mostly time. Um, and if I had additional channels here, I could turn on and off additional channels and I've got the full rendering settings available. Um, so I'm going to turn, so I can turn the, the rendering settings on and off. So everything I can do to a single panel, I can actually do to, to multiple selected panels. So if I select all, all of these panels on the left, and for these, I'm going to turn on just the, the red channel, as it currently is. And then I'm going to go through the other, the center column here and do the same. So each, um, each column then has um, all the same rendering settings. I'm also going to update all of the panels, um, select all of these and adjust the colors. So I'm going to choose the first, um, the, what, the, the first channel is going to go to um, Genta. Oops, that's not quite what I wanted. Oops, this one's going to go to yellow. And I want the yeah. Okay, so and I'm going to make this channel into magenta. Okay, so it doesn't turn on or off any channels that weren't turned on or off, but it does change the um, color for the channels and all the images. Okay, so that's because I want to do all of those images at once. I've, I've had all of these um, panels selected. And another thing I want to keep in, in, in sync with all the panels is um, the, the zoom level. So I want to zoom in a little bit for, for all these images. And I can do that in the bottom of the, the preview panel here. Um, and again, by because I've got them all selected, I can be sure that the they are all zoomed in the same amount and that the directly comparable sizes of, of the images. Um, but I, for each different row, and I can select it a row at a time, I may want to pan to different to show different regions. So I can still pan around to the image. It hasn't um, cropped the image and I haven't lost any regions outside of, of the crop region that's still all available and I can still pan around 
um, keeping all of the images on the same row in sync with each other. So that's kind of one way of, of cropping um, of cropping these panels. I can also, so I'm just going to select this one here. I can also use a crop dialog um, in the bottom of this um, the PV panel here. And that allows me to um, just draw a crop, a crop region. I can use shift if I want to make sure it's square. But um, so I can just crop that image in a, in a more natural sort of cropping tool. Um, and if I do that, what you'll notice is that the cropping um, resizes the panel to, to match the crop region and it makes it smaller within the bounds of the, of the previous outline of the panel. Um, I'm just going to show one other feature here um, is that I can copy this crop region from one panel and, and apply it to other panels. So with these, this, this line of crop um, controls here, I'm going to click the copy button. And then I'm going to select these other two panels um, that are of the same image and paste the crop region there. So that I can see that these are now showing the same crop region for all those panels. OK, so that I'm actually going to undo those changes. I don't want to make those just yet, but I just wanted to show that functionality. Um, and for again, I can undo with um, keyboard shortcuts or um, using the edit option there. So let's go back to these, um, showing these same crop region across all these panels. Um, and then finally, I'm going to copy this rightmost um, column. Um, and again, copy and paste that column um, to duplicate that. Um, and then one other of the, of the controls available in this um, in this crop tools down here is to reset um, the crop region, which will which will set the panel back to an uncropped panel. And again, it resizes it within the, the the bounds of the of the panel as it was before. So I've got these. Although it's showing the full image, it's a little bit it's smaller um, than I would like. So I can, what I'm going to do is resize that by selecting each of these smaller ones. And importantly, it includes this top left one that's going to, as a reference for the height that I want to use. And then instead of resetting the width and the height, as I did before, I'm just going to align the height of all of these panels. So that maintains um, these images on the right showing the whole image, but it updates the height to show the same to match each uh, row. Okay, so I've got all the panels uh, kind of laid out um, as I want. I can now go on to um, the next um, tool, ne next task, which is to, to add some labels. So I'm going to select all of these um, panels on the, the right two columns. And with these selected, I'm going to go into the labels tab on, on the right hand panel here. And first thing I'm, I want to do for all of these is to add a scale bar. Um, so I'm just going to click on um, here to add scale bar and that automatically um, adds one of the, the default size to each of these panels. So this is using the pixel size. Um, we have the pixel, pixel size set um, in a mirror for these images. Um, th if it's unset or, or if it is incorrect, you can actually just click on here and, and update it. Um, and it will use that, the value that you set there. Um, I can choose different length um, and units. Um, if, I, if I choose something that's wildly um, inaccurate here, I'll either get a very long scale bar or get a scale bar that shrinks down to, um, to nothing. Um, but in this case, the, the default size is suiting me quite well. But what I am going to do is choose um, just the rightmost um, column of images and 
make the scale bar a little bit longer. So 20 microns there. Um, I can update the position of the scale bar within the four internal corners um, of the panel. If I want to put this in a different um, location, I can do that. Just going to undo that. Um, I can also choose not to show the label if I want to, um, but the default is is to show the show the label, and I can choose the size of it. Um, so these these um, scale bar lengths here are dynamic. If it, if I zoom into these panels, the, the length of the scale bar will update accordingly. Okay, so I'm going to add some um, other labels to. To these panels, I've selected the top left panel, and I'm going to. So I can, in the simplest case, I can just type um, type in a text label that I want to add there. Again, I can choose the font size, um, the position. Let's go to the the left of the panel and color. Um, so that's a way of adding manual labels. But actually, um, as I've mentioned, what I'm going to use is the metadata that we have in Amero to add labels to all of these panels in a in one shot. So I'm just going to remove that manually added label, select these four panels um, to the left, and then from this drop down in this in the add labels um, toolbar, there's a, a drop down here that I can choose. And I'm going to choose um, key value pairs. Um, and so now and I'm going to choose a different um, orientation with this. Um, I'm going to choose the left vertical so they'll, they'll be vertical along the page. And so now when I go to add, it asks me what um, key out of all the key value pairs on these um, images, what key I want to use. And uh, in brackets down the side here, um, excuse me, I'm just gonna close this. Um, on the brackets on the left, it shows the number of images that have that, um, have key, oops, that have a, that key value pair. So, so in most cases, it's all four of them. Some, are, some, um, only one of the images has um, key value pair of that key. And as I click on each one of them, it tells me um, what um, an example label that will be created um, from that key value pair. Um, and so, I, if I've forgotten exactly what I, what key I want, I can get a reminder here. Um, and then by default, it's it's creating a label from both the key and the value. If I want to un uncheck the the key, now it's just going to show show the value. If I don't need the, the key there. Okay, so when I go ahead with that, um, so it's going to load the key value pairs for each of these images and add some labels. Um, and then if I want to tweak these a little bit, so maybe I want this. Um, to rename this for a select panel, I can I can just update that label manually. Okay, so now I'm going to select um, all these three columns and create some labels um, based on some other metadata. This time I'm going to choose to create labels based on the, the channels. And it's going to use the channel names um, for each to add the labels. Um, location, I'm going to put this in the top left corner of each label, of each panel. And I'm going to make the font size a little bit smaller. I don't need to worry about the color because it's going to use the color um, of, the, of the channel itself to create those labels. Um, Okay, so when I hit enter, now it's got these um, automatically generated labels for all those panels. Again, if I want to update um, these labels, 
what you'll notice here is that though it's added, for example, this pink um, magenta label to all the panels, um, it's collapsed them um, all together here so that I can batch edit um, that label for the panels. So what I'm going to do just for this column here is edit this lo location of that one um, and put it down in the bottom left. Okay, so that obscures the image a bit less in those cases. Okay, so that's all the labels that I want to, to add to these images. Um, and now still in the labels tab, I'm going to start um, add some regions of interest. So that's the top part of this uh, labels tab here. So with just this top top right um, image selected, I'm going to click on um, edit. Then it's going to open this RY's editing dialog. So I can add it. I can manually just add some um, ROIs to this image. Um, rectangles, lines, arrows, or ellipses can be added just directly in here. Um, and I can select the color and the thickness of these. Um, but I'm going to remove that for a second. And what I'm going to do is load um, the ROIs we have on this um, image from Amero. So this is loading the same ROIs that we saw earlier in the, the iViewer. Um, and this will allow me to, to browse through these and add them to the panel. Okay, it's loading quite a lot of data. Okay, so, so for each um, ROI, I'm sorry. Um, so it's got all of these um, polygons, the segmentations of, of the cells. Um, but I also know that for this image, if I scroll to the bottom, I've got a couple of, of arrows that um, I added to, to the image, just manual annotations. Um, so these are these are drawing uh, attention to particular features of, of the panel and. And they are have a particular Z section associated with them. Um, so if I click on, um, so I'm currently you can see in the top left panel here, I'm viewing Z section 89, um, and this arrow is on Z section 107. If I click on this, it will take me to that um, Z section. So if I'm interested in highlighting that in my figure, um, I don't have to find find it manually in the figure, it can, it can just take me to that, that location. Um, I'm actually not going to show this one, but um, I'm going to go back to, to add this one on Z section 80. If I, if I actually really did want to stay on the same um, the Z section, I can, I can still do that. I can revert to the, the Z section I was showing before, um, if that's my preferred view of, the, of this image. Um, and then let's also try and add some um, of these polygons. So you'll notice when, when I scroll down through these that so off to the, the top left of this image is where this, this um, ROI appears. And again, as I scroll through all of these, it's, it's highlighting them um, on the image because they I've got the shapes here for all of the Z sections that that shape, um, that that cell covers. Um, so I'm going to add, um, let's just let's choose one that's a bit more easy visible. And I'm just going to add that onto the image. Um, maybe I'll choose another, another one. So this, this um, process turns out as a little bit um, a little bit tricky because I've got a lot of ROIs um, on the image. And so as part of uh, actually um, prompted by this workshop, I've been working on a, on a new feature which allows me to 
um, add all of the regions of interest, all the ROIs on the current um, Z section across the whole image. Um, unfortunately, that's not released um, yet, so we don't have that latest that that feature available for this workshop. But it should it should come out soon um, once that once that feature is emerged, um, and that that will give you uh, an add all um, button at the top here that will basically add ROIs for all of these cells. Um, you, and the the image that I showed um, in the introduction that had the regions of interest um, that we were updating through the scripting that had regions of interest for all of these panels, and that was added using that feature. Okay, so for now we just added a few, a, a couple of um, regions just manually. Um, okay, and then I can click. Okay, so so we've got a couple of um, ROIs on this panel. That's the one that we've been editing, and. If I want to apply these across across other ones, um, then I can copy and paste them. I think what I'm going to do first is is update the um, the region that I've clocked this to to, to correspond more closely to um, those ROIs that I've added. So those are further over to the left of this image. Okay, um, and that should allow me now to copy regions from the, this panel on the right where I've added these. So I can do that just using these tools um, in the ROI section of the, of the labels tab here. I can also copy them actually in, in the ROI um, dialog itself. Um, I can copy individual ROIs. Using the controls here, this is going to copy all the, all the ROIs that's on that um, panel. Okay, so I've copied copy these and then I'm going to select these three panels here because I want to propagate these across all the panels and and they're going to hit paste okay so it's telling me that at least one of those um, regions that I had on that one was outside um, the viewport here so that wasn't pasted but I've got the ones that, that are applicable to this viewport here the arrow and the ROI Okay, so one other region of interest that I want to add is to show the location of this this region here, this insect, um, and where it, where it comes from on this main panel. So there's a couple of different ways I can I can do that. But since I have have the panels already um, laid out for me as I want, what I really want to do is just take take the coordinates of this crop region and and apply them as a new ROI. On the panel to the right, so I can do that using the, the copy and paste controls that um, that I've been showing for the for the crop region and for the ROIs. So, looking at this panel um, with the crop crop controls, I'm going to copy the the crop region, and that's copying the coordinates of this this rectangle. And then I'm going to paste those. I want to create a new ROI on this right hand panel, so I selected that right hand panel, and I'm going to under the ROI controls here, I'm going to paste. And that's going to create me a new rectangle from that corresponds to that crop region. So I'm just going to repeat that a couple of times. Um, for these other images, th this is one thing that's it's harder to do as, as a batch because I can't copy multiple regions and paste, paste multiple regions of, um, on different panels. So let's again do this. It gives me a chance to show this again. So I'm going to copy the crop region, this zoomed in panel, and then on the big panel, I'm going to paste that to create new rectangle of those coordinates. And just quickly, I'll do these, these other ones. Uh, that will reinforce that, that particular workflow. So copy crop region, select the zoomed out image, and paste as, um, as an ROI. Um, so 
having having seen this feature um, done in a much more sophisticated way in, in some other tools. So, for example, we had a chance to play with the quick figures um, tool for creating figures in in image J. Um, that does it does it as a sort of a one click um, create an inset option. So have to think about how to improve this, this workflow um, but, but in any case here we have um, the regions for those panels pasted across the uncropped images as, as to show the insets okay so that's that's pretty much um, and finally let me just select all these panels I'm going to align the um, the thickness of these just to make them more consistent Okay, so so that gives me the kind of the, the, the layout that I want. Um, so I'm going to save this figure as it is. Um, only 2021, um, and then give it a name, and that's going to save that file um, to the server. Um, and so that gives me a URL that I can bookmark or I can share with um, colleagues. So anyone who has permissions to view my data in a mail will be able to view this um, figure, although they won't be able to edit my figure. Um, I can show other figures that I have saved on a mail using the file open option. And that lists all the files that I have saved um, on a Mero. By default, it's just listing files that are owned um, by me. But again, the collaboration um, commissions in a Mero allow me to view files owned by other members um, of the groups that I'm in. That I'm in. Um, so I can choose a particular user um, or I can show all. Um, and then I can also filter by filter by name. So in this case, I'm going to show an example figure from this from this user, um, and talk about a few of the features that this figure shows. Okay, so this is a a multi-page figure. Um, so if I want to if I want to create a multi-page figure, I can do that up in the, the file um, paper setup. And so there's a two page, but I can go all the way up to 10, 10 pages. Um, and I can also choose the different um, uh, orientation, um, different size and orientation of the pages. Um, so that basically just adds extra pages. Um, to my canvas um, and then if I want to put images in those I can just simply um, drag them across to the pages that, that I want to. Okay so again I'm just going to undo that, um, come back to my two pages. Um, in the top left here we've got some um, time-lapse images um, which I haven't shown yet. Um, so as I was talking about creating labels um, from metadata for these images that have timestamp information in Amero, I can use the various different um, options of formatting um, the time as labels. Um, so this is time in minutes that they each have. And again, these are live um, labels so that if I update, um, the time the, then these these labels will update and just zoom in a little bit more so we can see these. So with the with these six panels selected in the center here, um, I can scroll through um, time. So I'm just incrementing time here for each one rather than set, setting them all to the same um, T index. So just clicking through, I'm updating the, the, the 
position of all these, um, the time index for all of these and the labels also being updated. Um, and finally, just down in the bottom here, um, this is a, a, a big, a large um, pathology image. So under the info tab here, you can see that this is 96 by 45,000 pixels. Um, and so I can still zoom into these. Um, so we don't have a tile-based um, viewer here, but it does still allow me to um, just render the, the chosen region kind of a nice space. So, um, so I can handle big, big images in that way. Okay, so I'm gonna go back um, to the file that I created earlier. I'm not gonna save these changes. Um, let's show all. Um, okay, so here's, here's the one that I created earlier. Um, so one thing I, I showed when I started with this, this figure is how to um, open with to use images in the web client to open them, open these images in um, in figure. If I want to choose additional um, images to add, I'm going to come out of parade for a second. Um, so if I've just got other images that I want to add into an existing figure, one way I can do this is to select the images I want to work with. Um, and then I really want to copy a, a, the IDs of these images. And one way I can do that is up in this link um, option here. This actually gives me a, a URL um, to link to those images if I wanted to bookmark, um, bookmark them or share a link to them in some way. I can use that link. But because it contains the IDs, it's a useful way of, of bringing those um, images into the figure. So in my figure tab, where I'm editing the existing figure, so I go to add an image, um, and I can paste in that that URL with those images, and that will bring these new new figures, new panels into the image. Um, another another way that I can bring in. Um, so I'm just going to remove those for a second. Um, if I wanted to update or add rows to this existing panel using the same uh, layout that I've got here, um, by bringing new new panel new images in, I'd have to go through the same same steps to to add or replace these. But I can do this in a in a, a slightly different way. Let me just show you this by. So if I wanted to update um, this row of the, of the figure here, so all these images uh, are the same, come from the same image, they're the same image ID. And I'm going to choose another um, example image um, from this set. And again, this is, so now I'm, I'm copying the image ID, but this is just the the ID for a single image that I want to, to use here. And, and then I'm going to use in the info tab here, I'm going to edit um, the ID. So this is basically going to switch out the um, existing image and replace it with, a, with this new image. So I've been told that they've got slightly different Z sections. That's that's kind of fine. Um, and okay, so that's yeah. Okay, it didn't quite refresh. Refresh automatically. I had to change the Z section to force it to refresh. But now I can see this um, image that I've just brought in um, applied the same um, layout and settings of, um, across all of these. Um, panels. So that's kind of a way of using um, the, the, the layout that I've created. Um, and if I wanted to 
acquire a whole new set of images and just reuse an old um, an old uh, an existing figure for a bunch of new images. That's one way that I could do that. Okay, so I'm going to save that again, and and now final step um, that I want to show is just the export of um, a panel, and by default the export will um, create me a PDF. So this is a PDF being created on the server with a, a, a script running on the server side, and that's available to download. Um, I've got the options here for creating, or for exporting in a couple of different formats. Um, also the TIFF format, the 300 DPI. Um, and then, then there's options for me to, to export as a zip that contains all the images um, that go into it um, as a way of um, showing the workflow um, from, the, from the original images to cropping and to inserting the figure. And it also provides images if I want to um, manipulate them again in some other software. The other option here is to export to create a new image in a mirror. Okay, so I've got the, the PDF um, on the server, I can download that. And then let me try and whoops, find this in my, okay, so this is not gonna show my um, downloads folder to you. I'm only sharing my um, web. Um, so, oops, let me just find this. Okay. Um, so, right, so I've got the PDF. I'm just going to open it in the, in the browser so you can see it. So, this is exported a, a multi page PDF. Where is it showing up? Okay. Um, so, it's exported a, um, a PDF. It's a multi page and in in fact, if I had a multi-page figure, there'd be additional pages. Um, and so I've got the figure itself and then additional sort of information page that has links to the various um, images that are within that figure and a link to the figure itself. So I can, and th these links will take me back to the image um, in the web client to show, to show that image in its original settings, if you like. With all the acquisition and um, other metadata associated with it, so I can I've got a good idea of where that where that image um, came from. Um, in fact, that same feature is available within within Figure itself. If I was to select a um, a panel, and I want to actually find out what you know what what is this image, where did it come from? In the info tab here, I can open it in a few different places, either directly in the image viewer. Um, uh, in in Ivia, um, or as I want to do here, is in the web client. So that, this will take me back to um, the original image, and that's the same link that's embedded in the in the PDF. So it provides me a way to find that original data. Okay. Um, so I think that's everything I wanted to show for the um, the initial workflows for um, for figure um, and how are we doing for the time? I think we'll if we finished early, that's probably a good thing. Um, and so we'll have a break and then we'll go over some more of the scripting workflows in the in the next session. I think you are bang on time because uh, this is supposed to end at 12.20 and the breakout should start at 12.30 uh, British time. And we have 12.18, so two minutes before the end of the session. Okay, ideal, great. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop um, sharing and
Right. So I think we can probably stop recording.